Now the big game is coming up and New York ain't in it again. So my priority is directed towards the food. And if you're entertaining, you've got to have wings to be a winner. So today we're making cherry pepper wings with mascarpone ranch. No batter, no dredge, just simple wings with a delicious new sauce I've been working on. It's game day with a little Italian American twist. I wanna thank our sponsor today, Rocket Money, but more on them later. First, we gotta deal with those chicken wings, which I started working with yesterday. Got them out of their package and arranged them on a sheet tray with a wire rack. Salted them on each side, then arranged them in one flat layer, placed them in the fridge to dry out uncovered overnight. This is not vitally necessary, but it will produce a more seasoned chicken wing, as well as a crispier one. Now those wings are gonna still hang out there until we're ready to use them. We just need to make the mascarpone ranch right now, which is very simple. And here are the ingredients we're gonna use for the ranch. I'm gonna take a blender, kind of just throwing everything into the blender and zipping it up. We we'll go ahead and take this eight ounce can of mascarpone, my little twist on a classic ranch. I'm just gonna add that all into the blender. And then into that to thin it out, a little bit of buttermilk. I'm gonna use my eye, maybe two, three tablespoons. You can always use that to adjust the consistency later. Now instead of vinegar, I'm gonna take some hot cherry peppers, which is gonna be one of the bases for the recipe, and I'm gonna add the liquid only to this just now. Maybe two tablespoons. Again, we can adjust that later. Then throw in about a tablespoon of fresh parsley, and then some fresh chives. Then some dried minced granulated onion and garlic. I like this better than the actual like granulated powder. For some reason, as soon as you add this, the smell of ranch just comes alive. So I'm gonna add maybe a teaspoon of each, but you're gonna smell it immediately. A little bit of MSG, cause why not? You don't have to add it. Maybe a teaspoon, some salt, and then fresh cracked black pepper. Then just let it go. A little too thick, but we're gonna give it a taste. A little salt. Touch more of the cherry pepper liquid. And then another tablespoon of the buttermilk. Give it another zip, see where you're at. And right now we're working for consistency. So I think we're there, but it still needs a little bit more acid. So I'm gonna add a little bit more of that vinegar. And one final touch is a little hit of lemon. It should be nice and creamy. And then you wanna get that into a bowl, wrap it up, get it into the fridge until we're ready to use it, and then rinse out that blender because we need to use it again. Next up, let's call it a cherry pepper buffalo sauce. The idea for me was to sort of create a similar flavor profile to a buffalo sauce, but making it homemade with cherry peppers. Highly inspired by my friend Anthony Vitolo's chicken scapriello wings at Emilio's Bellato in New York City. And if you don't know about it, I did a video with my friend's YouTube channel all about Emilio's Bellato. I'll leave a link down in the description. We need a little butter, one jar of this. So for the recipe, I'm gonna tell you to get a jar and a half of it because we needed it for the ranch and for a little bit of garnish later. A little bit of butter, and then I'm just gonna slice up three large garlic cloves, pretty thin. Once the garlic is sliced, we're ready to make the sauce. In a small saucepan, add in a tablespoon of butter and allow it to melt over high heat. Once melted, add the garlic and hit it with a little bit of salt and cook until the garlic begins to lightly toast around the edges. Keep the garlic moving so it toasts nice and evenly. And once you see it get nicely browned around the edges, we can go ahead and add in that entire jar of the cherry peppers, including their liquid. Bring that mixture up to a boil, and we're looking to reduce that by about half. While that happens, we can get the oil for the wings ready. This is my third use out of this oil, and I'm using about two quarts, and I'm just gonna top it off with a little fresh oil. Now, Back to the sauce, you can think of this like the beurre blanc we made two episodes ago. We're reducing this down and then we're going to blend it and build the sauce back up with cold butter. Turn the heat off and allow it to cool before we blend it. Now it's slightly cooled and that vinegar should be hitting your nostrils. That's what you like. <coughs> Now just get it into the blender bowl. And you don't wanna reduce that liquid too much for this preparation, otherwise the hot sauce is gonna be a little too thick. Get all that garlic in there. And then to that, I'm just gonna add maybe two teaspoons of sugar. Now we're gonna give it a blend and see where we're at.
Now we're gonna take this, I'm gonna cut some cubes of butter and just like we would make buffalo sauce, get that back on the heat and melt butter into it. So just maybe like a few tablespoons, but we're gonna play it by ear. I'm gonna cut about four. Now back at the stove, get the pot back on low heat and pour that sauce through the strainer back into the pot. Press all that sauce through the strainer and try and catch all those little particles that we don't want in the sauce. And then we can start to work in the butter. And just like we did in the Beurre Blanc two episodes ago, constantly whisk in one knob of butter at a time. And then once that knob is fully melted, you can go ahead and add another knob of butter. And we're going to repeat that until the sauce is glossy and thick and can coat the back of a spoon. With a sauce like this for wings, it has to cling to the wings to be the best that it can be. This looks perfect to me. Now we can set that off to the side and the oil is almost up to temp. We can allow that sauce to cool while that oil gets to where it needs to be. Now while the oil comes up to temperature, I gotta save you money thanks to our sponsor today, Rocket Money. Now I bet money that you've got subscriptions that you're being charged for every month for apps and services that you don't want or use. And Rocket Money is the personal finance app that can help you cancel subscriptions, lower your monthly bill, and manage your money better. Now I learned about Rocket Money about a year or two ago. So all these subscriptions to dumb apps I never use, sucking money from my bank account every month. But thanks to the Rocket Money app, it will show me everything I'm being charged for so I can decide what I no longer need and then quickly and easily cancel those subscriptions without having to call or email a single person or company. Rocket Money has helped save people on average $720 a year, which is crazy, with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. Basically, they're doing God's work. You can set up budgets to control your spending and even set up smart savings where you can choose an amount and frequency to automatically deposit money into your smart savings account, which you can withdraw at any time. So to get started taking control of your personal finances and to cleanse yourself of unwanted subscriptions, you and I both know they're there. Head to rocketmoney.com backslash not another cooking show or hit my link down in the description to get started for free. Now let's get back into the recipe. Now I can see that the oil is right at the temperature we want. We're gonna fry this in two stages. The first stage we're gonna fry around 320 degrees, which means I want the oil to be around 330. So by the time I drop the cold chicken wings in and the temperature of the oil drops, it'll be around 310 and then climb back up to around 320. Now we can get the wings out of the fridge. The skin should be substantially drier than it was yesterday. And you can even let them dry for two days if you've got the time. Looks like the oil is where I need it to be for this first fry. So I can go ahead and add the chicken wings. And then I'm going to fry drumsticks with drumsticks and flats with flats, just because I have a manageable amount and that's gonna be the most ideal way to fry each of them. First, I add in the drumsticks and we're going to fry them for about six to seven minutes. You wanna make sure they don't stick by keeping them moving. And I wanna start to see a light golden brown develop and the skin become relatively crispy. If you want to be precise about it, you can use an instant thermometer and you're looking for around 165 to 170 degrees Fahrenheit internal temperature for this first fry. Once you're there, you can get them out of the oil and let them cool on a fresh wire rack. And then we can get the flats into the oil and we're gonna just repeat that same process. The idea here is that the first fry may get the skin crispy, but the resting juice moisture will inevitably release and soften the skin. So by frying them first and cooling them, we're allowing that moisture to release so the second time we fry them at a higher temperature, we can quickly evaporate that excess moisture and ensure a wing stay crispier longer. Now get the flats out of the oil and we're gonna let them cool on that wire rack before frying them again. We're gonna allow them to come down to room temperature. Now you got your wings par cooked. They're fully cooked, but for our purposes, Parker. You've got your hot sauce, you've got your ranch. At this point, I would call you prepped for entertaining. This is just what restaurants do. Get the wings half cooked, they'll put them in the freezer or the refrigerator, and they'll just chill. That moisture will release, they will get a little bit soft on the skin, all of that juice inside, but that's what the second fry is going to be. It's gonna be at a higher temperature, it's gonna evaporate all that moisture, it's gonna make them perfect and crispy and hot that you can fry in batches your guests. So we're gonna let that chill and while we do one more piece of garnish we need is a little bit of a dice of some cherry peppers just to kind of bring home what the dish is all about visually on the plate. Now just pull out a few of those cherry peppers. We're gonna cut off the stem and just clean them up a little bit so we can line them all up and cut them into like a really nice fine dice for a nice garnish in the end. We've got everything ready to go now. The only other thing we gotta do is get that temperature of the oil back up to around 370. 
which means I'm gonna take it up to 385, because when I drop all of the chicken, it's going to drop again. So anywhere between 370 and 380. Chicken's been cooled down for about 30 minutes to an hour. Oh, that's about the minimum I would do. And we've got everything ready to go. Now we've got the oil all the way up to about 375, knowing it's gonna drop slightly when we add that chicken again. And just like the first fry, I'm gonna drop the drumsticks with the drumsticks and cook them until they are now deeply golden brown and crispy, about another five to six minutes. Making sure that oil stays around 370 and doesn't drop too far below that temperature and doesn't get too much hotter than it. At this stage, they are cooked, so I'm relying on the visual appearance. How brown they are, how crispy they feel when I touch them with the metal spider I'm using, and once they're golden brown but not too dark, they're perfect for me. Your wings shouldn't be pale. Once they've all gone crispy and beautiful and golden brown, now we can combine it all. First, let's plate up the mascarpone ranch. Next, get out a large bowl to toss these perfectly crispy wings in that sauce. Just pour the sauce around the rim of the bowl, throw in a serving of those wings, and swirl and toss them around until they are thoroughly coated in the sauce. And I like to hit them with a little bit more sauce on top once they're coated. Then we can stack them up on a plate, and any of that leftover sauce in the bowl, we're gonna drizzle all over the wings to make sure that there's plenty of sauce. Then get the ranch on the plate, and then to tie it all together and to give it that visual of what the heart of this dish is, some of those diced cherry peppers. And now this might look like buffalo wings, but they're not. They might be a little bit better. Clean off the bone, tender, juicy, crispy, perfect. These wings check off all the boxes of buffalo sauce, but if you're an Italian American with a love of cherry peppers, it's a new flavor that's kind of the same, but kind of different. And with the mascarpone ranch, get out of town. And if you don't want to fumble the recipe, link's gonna be down in the description, as always. Hope you enjoy the game. That's all that I got today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself.